Welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking a little time out here on Thursday to spend with us at uh, Trend Data um, and to talk about this, uh, what I think is very germane subject on uh, rehires and the uh, coming uh, recovery. Uh, so just a brief uh, little history about Trend Data. We are located down in uh, Richardson, Texas, which is just uh, uh, outside of Dallas, and I'm looking out my window right now, working from home, like probably many of you. Uh, it's a beautiful 85 degree day out, and you never know that anything was wrong in the world. Um, but uh, Trend Data, we uh, we launched our company three years ago. Uh, we sell largely to corporate clients or any organization that has a workforce, and our uh, product offering is a predictive people analytics. It's a cloud SaaS offering, so all you need is a browser to access it. Um, Quickly, our uh, review what we're going to cover our agenda for today. Um, so we're going to start out and talk about the different types of uh, recoveries, a little history lesson on uh, when uh, um, economies have gone into recession and what are the different ways that uh, uh, the companies have come out of it or where the economies have come out of it to give a little background. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about high performers and how you can um, identify and make sure that uh, you know who your high performers are in the changing economy. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about boomerang hires, which is a concept of uh, uh, someone leaving the company and coming back, but it's a little more to it than that. And then we'll also cover um, uh, corporate alumni programs and, and good ways to actually uh, track some of your ex-employees uh, for eventual and hopeful uh, rehiring. Now we'll talk a little bit about using AI and uh, predictive analytics to um, uh, let you know when's the right time to pull the trigger in a recovery and start bringing people back. Um, as uh, Jonathan said, we will uh, entertain questions at the end. If you have a question in the uh, uh, near term, just uh, send it, as you said, through the, the chat bubble there, and we'll, we'll make sure to get to all of them at the end of this session. I've got this session only for a half hour. Uh, we can stay on it a little longer to answer questions, but uh, we want to make sure that we get all the content in in the next uh, 20, 25 minutes. <clears throat> okay, the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, some of the different types of uh, recoveries uh, from recessions that economies have gone, that go through to give you kind of a uh, context and also maybe help you plan your own strategy and roadmap. Um, over to the left, you have what's called the V-shaped recovery, and you can see why it's uh, called that. Basically, what happens is you got a period of time where the economy is at its peak, and then it kind of does a, a crash down um, uh, to a point and then turns around and snaps right back, usually uh, over a couple of months or maybe a year-long period, uh, but it's really a, a somewhat uh, short decline. Um, this often happens uh, quite possibly in similar scenarios to what we have right now, is where uh, the economy, uh, the underpinnings of the economy were actually very good, and it was some external event that uh, caused the economy to uh, go into a, um, an un unexpected and uh, steep uh, decline. But once that event is kind of cleared up, since the economy was pretty good going into it, it was able to snap back a little quicker than others. Um, this could or could not be the situation right now, um, since uh, the economy was good at the beginning of this year, and then when this pandemic broke out, it kind of cut off all consumerism with all the lockdowns. If, uh, if it doesn't take too much time and the, uh, um, the uh, illness can be addressed, then we could be in a position where the economy will come back very quickly and steep, uh, as steep a rise as it did in a decline. Uh, the second type over towards the middle here, uh, we call it the, a U-shaped economy. There's a couple of diff different variations. Um, but really what it's looking at is the economy going down and not coming back to um, an above recession level for a while. Uh, but as you can see in this example, it's not really a smooth um, U or it's down uh, kind of all the way because that's not usually the way it happens. Usually what happens in a, in a prolonged recession is um, uh, economy will go down and it'll make numerous attempts to get back up. Uh, but the support just isn't there from the rest of the economy. Uh, so it eventually does settle down and stay um, in a recessionary uh, uh, state for uh, 
um, uh, a year, or a couple of years maybe, and then comes out um, on the other side. Uh, so a uh, longer time period than the V shape. Um, some people have called a W recession where it goes down, pops up, goes down, and goes up again. Uh, but really they're all versions of the U because essentially the economy has gone down and stayed at recessionary levels for a longer period of time. Uh, the worst, of course, is what's called the L-shaped uh, um, recovery, where the economy actually uh, goes down and actually, rather than even pointing up at any point, just goes almost laterally for a, a long period of time before it comes up. Um, you can see this example over here was taken during the 90s, uh, where the economy did come down and kind of stay flat. But if uh, most of you are alive during the 90s, when it did come back, it came it came roaring back in the 95, really all the way through to 2000. Uh, so a lot of scenarios that can can play out um, uh, and gives good backdrop for our um, discussion. Now, uh, whenever you're in a situation where you might have to let people go, or even if you're just in the normal um, uh, constructs of your business, one of the most important things you need to do is to know who your high performing employees are. Um, <clears throat> If it's a good roaring economy, you wanna make sure that you know who they are and you wanna know how you keep them because the economy like it was about three months ago, um, people were always trying to poach your high performers. You wanna definitely know who they are during a good economy. And if it's during um, a bad economy, you wanna make sure is if, uh, you know, if you're in the position where you, have to, where you end up having to let people go, you don't end up getting rid of your high performers uh, along with everybody else if possible. Um, you want to make sure that you hold on to them. Um, it's important when establishing high, uh, when uh, identifying high performers that you have an established criteria that it's not just kind of a, a gut level decision by managers or people in the organization. So it's important to define, um, particularly from an HR standpoint and a leadership standpoint, as to what, what you consider a high performer. Is it people, is it based solely on performance, on performance scores? Uh, is it the skill set that the individuals have? Is it how long they've been doing the job successfully? Uh, so uh, it's always important to be able to have a, you know, established criteria of who your high performers are, so you can actually make it much easier to track them. Whereas if it's kind of a, a loose uh, department by department definition, it makes it difficult to keep track of them, and then you might accidentally have a layoff and get rid of a third of your high performers, which I'm sure nobody wants to do, um, or in any case. Um, so, you know, definitely make whatever efforts you can, you can to keep your high performers, even if you are uh, forced to do a layoff. Um, one of the methods, and we did a, a webinar on this one last week, is to see if there are ways to um, reallocate high performing employees if the particular um, job that they're doing, um, maybe just one that gets cut off. You know, it's a, if it's a <clears throat> customer service job, out at maybe a branch or something, and I have an example of that on the next uh, screen. Um, can you move that person if that job's not gonna be doing anything for a while to another area in the company where they can do something else until that area opens up again? Because getting good people in whatever um, position it is is very hard. And uh, when the economy kicks up again, you wanna make sure that you have those positions filled. Now kind of move into this reallocation strategy. And we talked about this uh, in last week's webinar. <clears throat> is uh, to kind of have a, a, a list or a, a visualization in your company as, uh, you know, what are similar type jobs and, uh, you know, when are those jobs in demand and not in demand? So here's an example here. You've got a bank where you might have uh, a couple of uh, positions that might, might be similar in makeup with a, you know, few differentiations. So a bank might have a, a lot of branches, like many of the ones, Bank of America and all such, and at the branch or branches, you have a lot of tellers. Now this might be considered uh, what we'd call an at-risk position right now, because if everybody's on lockdown and they're not visiting their local banks, um, you're not gonna have a, a lot for these uh, uh, people at these branches to do, uh, tellers in particular. Uh, people will probably be doing most of their things online or at machines rather than going in and interacting. So you've got these people in this teller position. Um, most of their interaction is face-to-face, -face, but they, they deal with client problems all the time. Uh, they have to know the bank's processes uh, to be able to function in their job, and they have to be able to use the um, internal uh, computer systems at the bank. Now, if you look somewhere else in the organization, for example, maybe a, 
um, a more of an HQ or a, a staff position, uh, uh, a lot of banks have uh, uh, call centers right now. And actually in the recent uh, federal guidelines, I believe, um, uh, banking call centers have been identified as essential positions because of all the money that's flowing through banks out through um, these SBA loans and stimulus and stuff that's flowing through. Uh, banking call centers are just flooded with calls these days. Um, so if you look at similarities in the position, someone in a call center is often dealing with client problems. They have to know internal processes and systems. Uh, one of the differences being that they, de they deal remote. Now, I'm sure the jobs aren't uh, that identical, but this is an example where you might be able to say, okay, I've got, you know, 200 branches with, uh, you know, maybe a thousand great tellers in them that uh, I don't want to have to furlough, but um, my uh, call center is getting three and a half times the normal uh, amount of inbound calls. Maybe I can move some of those people over there, have them work from home for a time being, and save the uh, ability of having to let people go. Um, but it could be, um, you know, bigger situations than this. So you might not necessarily have, uh, you know, that close of a match of positions within your organization, but you might have positions that you know are going to be tough to fill regardless. And I just took a list off of um, Money Inc., which had the most demand, uh, in-demand jobs coming into the year in 2020. Uh, I see a lot of interesting uh, jobs here. Um, but it might be a time where a company might decide, you know, when things get better, I'm going to have to go out and hire these different positions. Maybe there are some talented individuals in the company right now, but their position might be phased out. But maybe I invest in some of my internal employees and try and turn them into some of these more um, uh, difficult to hire positions over the next couple of months, uh, rather than having to go out and rehire them when things come back. Um, I pointed out a couple of examples here. As you see, two of those, the most in-demand jobs are wind and uh, solar energy technicians. Uh, right now, the uh, oil and gas companies are struggling mightily, but most of the big ones, uh, Exxon and uh, Chevron, actually do have wind and solar divisions. So the question would be is how different would it be to take someone with an energy oil and gas focus and turn them into an energy wind and solar focus? Um, above my pay grade, but just something to point out, um, another area, I was reading about this the other day, um, was um, uh, women actually um, uh, uh, increasing in the ranks of being able to drive heavy trucks. Uh, most of you are as old as I am, you've always thought of uh, truck tires as not only being male, but like really big, strong men because the trucks were so easy, uh, difficult to handle. But a lot of the modern technology and the power steering and everything that's put into a lot of these uh, big heavy trucks have uh, made it less dependent on physical strength to actually drive the truck. So it's actually been a booming profession uh, for women in the last um, three to four years. Uh, so again, it might be something a logistics company, if they need more drivers, um, might look to um, uh, maybe some of their female population, which they haven't necessarily considered for those types of jobs in the past. But just a couple of ideas of what you can do to reallocate staff in the case of uh, you know, uh, maybe having to cut back so um, getting to the rehire <coughs> aspect. So um, first is the concept of, you know, what is a boomerang hire? So a boomerang hire uh, actually kind of got its name more during economic uptimes over the last uh, decade. And it's basically someone who um, leaves an organization and then rejoins the organization at a later date. Usually it's um, um, someone who left voluntarily, uh, was thought highly of in the company, um, and the company kept tabs on them because uh, they were a couple of different reasons. One, if they leave the company and go to an augmenting uh, type of uh, position where they can direct revenue back to the company is one reason that companies want to keep in touch with them. But also um, someone might go away and you might have the opportunity to hire them back, maybe at a higher level. Maybe they went off and got some experience that's later useful. Um, so it's been a common term that's taken place a lot in the last um, a decade, the concept of a boomerang hire. Now, it, as I said, it's mostly been talked about for voluntary hires who left the company, but it can also apply to someone who just is summarily let go during a crisis like now. So you may be forced to let someone go that you thought very highly of uh, because of what we talked about earlier, you know, they were just in a position that's not um, relevant or producing right now. Um, but if the economy were to get better, um, you know, very quickly, 
uh, you could, you, it's somebody you would most likely hire back in a, in, in, in a heartbeat. And why this is important is um, because if you look at, uh, you know, the most steepest recovery, the V-shape, um, you might be forced to lay people off during this, uh, this quick downslide here. Um, you know, revenue may fall off a cliff. You might not have the time to consider the reallocation um, aspect, and you may just have to quickly let people go. Um, but if things snap and turn around quickly, who's better to step back into those jobs than people you've already trained, uh, know the company, know the product? Uh, so the best thing to do is if you can bring those people back really quickly uh, to take over those jobs and not necessarily have to do a lot of things because uh, you know the advantages of rehiring someone are, are numerous. You know, first of all, there's no surprises. The person was with your company; they got through the onboarding and the initial uh, stages, so you know they're a solid person because you kept them before. Um, definitely reduced cost per hire. You know, if it's a matter of months, you probably don't have to spend any money in recruiting or anything to get those people back. Um, and uh, as far as bringing them back and training them. There's you know very little ramp up uh, time to take place, so they can pretty much come back and plug right into their job um, and do it as they had you know a couple of months ago when you had to let them go. So a lot of advantages of uh, bringing uh, people back. Um, it's probably in the most uh, appropriate picture here of you know bringing things back, but uh, um, I did uh, I always like to inject sometimes a little fun into these presentations. So uh, we were going to offer a um, a $10 gift card to the first five people who can name this television show. Um, so if you want to send your uh, your guesses into Jonathan, try and send them privately just to Jonathan. Otherwise, someone else will see your guess and and steal it away. Um, but uh, we'll we'll offer $10 gift cards to the first five people who do this, and uh, Jonathan will announce who the winners are uh, at the end. So um, good luck. So. Um, so, uh, uh, so no ramp up capabilities, um, but so how do, how, how do you keep in touch with these people um, uh, once they've left the company? Um, so this brings in the concept of uh, corporate alumni, alumni programs. Um, we, uh, we have a sister company that has a fantastic alumni offering. And what it is essentially is you create a community of uh, people who've left the company. Uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, um, you want to keep them engaged, the sense that they might um, eventually be um, employees that you would hire back. Um, you also might want to keep them engaged so they could actually refer you business. Um, and also, and if you're, you've let people go, um, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a devastating effect to individuals and um, corporations often get a, a bad rap for uh, summarily letting people go and sort of a uncaring fashion, um, providing an, a, 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 an alumni community where people can stay connected to the company, particularly if it's something where you think they might, um, you might want to hire them back, the sense of connection is very, um, is, is, is very, is very good. It keeps people involved, uh, helps their psyche, uh, lets you pass on information of how the company's doing. If you are making the turn and things are coming back and you might, might start to, um, uh, bringing people back. It's also a good way to, um, you know, let your alumni know if there are other opportunities in other industries, maybe with your sub suppliers or um, uh, tangential companies to, to direct them in the right way. And from a corporate standpoint, it, it, it shows a lot of uh, caring. Because one thing I always like to point out is, you know, recessions are temporary. Um, and when we come out of it, um, you want to be thought of as a caring, good company. And caring is not just uh, how you care about for your employees in the near term when they're employees, but how decent a per company you are when you're when you're letting people go. And this is a factor that's very taken into consideration when um, uh, Forbes and Fortune and all those places uh, publications come out with their best places to work. So there's a number of uh, reasons why um, creating an online community can be beneficial to the company as well as uh, to the uh, to the employees. Um, Another aspect, though, um, is to, uh, is to uh, keep track of uh, people uh, that you have let go. Um, so you might look at doing workforce planning for not only your alumni, uh, but for your ex-employees. Um, 
so here's like a typical dashboard for workforce planning for your employees where you attract things like um, uh, you know how many employees you have what's the turnover rate uh, who are your high performers who's working remotely compensate all the things uh, the key metrics that you might want to keep track of uh, when um, you know looking at your employee and your workforce um, you can also use these same tools um, to keep track of your ex workforce um, because uh, one you you if you uh, you know have a tool like this you you will have kept that uh, you will have had data on people that you've let go. You will have known what kind of employees they were when they're there. So you can keep track of, uh, you know, how many of your employees have left the company in the last couple of months, you know, how many are in your alumni program, so that lets you know that they're engaged, how many were high performers when they were with the company, and a variety of other factors that might uh, uh, you might want to keep track of in addition to knowing if you're uh, looking to bring people on. and. Uh, Solutions like the Trend Data Solution offer you uh, predictive analytics, uh, which can also let you uh, see um, uh, what the economy is doing and when are things going to pick up uh, to start bringing people back on board and project into the future what are your rehiring possibilities, uh, so you can get a you know a jump on your competitors as to when it's time to start uh, bringing people back. Because if you look again at the um, uh, curve right here. I'm going to use a little bit of a drawing tool. Um, see if that works. So essentially, if you start doing your rehiring right here, everybody else is going to start doing their rehiring right there, and it's going to be a lot more competitive. If you can get um, uh, some insights and prediction before the game and start bringing your people back right here, it's not going to be as competitive going after those people. It'll give you a head start as to uh, you'll be fully up to staff when things are really rocking over here as opposed to competing with everybody else who's going to be rehiring right there. Uh, so a good, um, a good tool, predictive action to let you know a little ahead of the time, a little ahead of time when you need to start um, uh, uh, um, start to rehire. So um, I always like to use this quote. It's a uh, Wayne Gretzky was a you know the great hockey player, and hockey was a very fast-moving sport. Uh, talked a lot about uh, um, you know you're always having to um, play the game in motion. And uh, Gretzky's quote was always a very germane one for business because that a you know a good hockey player plays where the puck is at the current time, and that's often what happens in a lot of HR departments. You're very good at doing a snapshot of where you are today. Uh, but a great hockey player plays where the puck is going to be. So being in the position where the puck's going to be to make a score um, is what you want to be. You want to be where the game is going to be in the future, not stuck at the current moment and behind what's going to happen. So um, a germane quote for business and one that I, I think HR and workforces can um, really make uh, a lot of. Um, before I do questions, I did want to point out that uh, um, if you do want to get a look at the uh, trend data system, we'd be happy to set up a demo for you of some of the things I alluded to. But right now, we're going to stick to the um, uh, content whoops, uh, shoot, of um, uh, what we were talking about. And uh, at this point, I am going to uh, move to questions. And uh, while we're uh, entertaining questions, I'm uh, going to just leave on the screen. This is our website. Um, uh, and if you go to the resources tab on our website, it has all of our past uh, webinars, our on-demand webinars. Um, so you can go uh, look at this one today or any of the past ones we've had, as well as all of our other content. But um, at this point, uh, Jonathan, it looks like the question bar is very full. Uh, first, tell us who won the first. Tell us who won the uh, the gift certificates. Okay, we'll do. I've had some good conversations uh, about this show. Uh, so if you, if you hadn't guessed it already, it's Welcome Back, Mr. Cater, uh, which I love that show. Okay, gift card winners. There's no Mr. There's no Mr. in the title, though, and it's just Welcome Back, Cotter. You're right, yeah, yeah. We'll accept, we'll accept both. I think it's both, but... line there. <laughs> uh, all right, so we've got Shirley Hovland, Morris Yankel, Jane Schindler, Kathy Yankee uh, and Kristen Slocum. 
Okay, well, congratulations. We will, uh, uh, I think you've submitted your email to be on this, but if you want to go ahead and uh, email that to Jonathan uh, or um, chat that to him, we, we can, uh, we'll get your gift cards out to you. Um, okay, questions. Yes, so uh, I did also receive some questions. Um, let's see. Uh, the first ones were about, uh, we can't hear the sound, uh, but we got that all straightened out. Uh, here we go. Um, yeah, do you, do you have any recommendations for alumni software? Yeah, the one I had talked about was our, uh, our uh, partner, uh, sister company of ours in Sala. Uh, they have probably the top offering on the market today. I've, I've seen it several times and worked with some of their clients. And it's a, it's a, that's a great one. And it's spelled I-N-S-A-L-A. -A. Very good. Very good. Um, the next one was, who was Gabe's wife? <laughs> that was Julie on, on the show, that is. Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, what, actually, just since we're on that, uh, did you did you think Welcome Back, Cotter uh, was a funny show? Someone asks. <laughs> did I think? Well, uh, actually, I did think it was a funny show. I watched it as a teenager, um, and I grew up in New York. Both my parents were teachers in New York, and we thought they'd be very excited to see the show. So we got them down to watch it. My siblings and I one time, and they looked at us like we were brain dead. They just didn't get it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I watch it about 20 years later and it wasn't quite as funny, but I did enjoy it when I was growing up. So. Fair enough. Um, okay, well, here's here's one relevant to uh, to the webinar and the solution. Uh, do you have any recommendations to categorize high performers uh, if you don't do reviews? That's an interesting one. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting one because uh, 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 I've seen like a lot of the big companies are not doing it actually performance reviews where they're providing scores and such. Um, so what a lot of them do are they're doing a lot of it based on manager recommendation, uh, but it's a lot based on, you know, quantitative things, you know, rather than just saying the manager, do you like this person? Uh, coming out with, you know, kind of checkpoints of, uh, you know, what you think of people, but, you know, also things like, um, you know, uh, particular skill sets that are hard to, um, hard to acquire. Um, tenure with the company, you know, how long has someone been doing a job uh, successfully, uh, certifications, um, 360 feedback, how do their peers uh, feel about them? So there's a lot of ways uh, companies are doing that now uh, outside of just uh, taking performance scores. Very good. Um, so someone asks, um, what, metrics, what metrics are there from trend data to look at uh, to get an idea about uh, the economy uh, and when it's turning around. Yeah, so what uh, what we do is, uh, in addition to, um, uh, you know, being able to track your internal data is we're able to bring in external data, um, whether it's economic data or um, uh, survey or employment data. So we actually bring a lot of this into our uh, predictive engine so we can actually predict uh, not only, you know, what's going to happen with your predictive, with your workforce, but also, um, tie it in with external events. So you can see um, uh, if this happens, this is gonna happen, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, we can use data from the past where um, there's been recessions, but also economic data that's currently available. So a lot of things, and we can drill deeper into that if uh, someone wants to take a closer look at trend data. Okay, okay. Um, there's one more here. Uh, does Trend Data have a library of similar positions within industries uh, for the that you offer uh, to clients? Yeah, we're actually been putting that together because that's um, uh, uh, been a really hot topic of late. We started um, floating that topic about you know a month and a half ago when this all started, and we got a lot of requests from clients and prospects asking. Uh, um, you know, what, what, are you, what are you guys seeing within companies? That, that, that bank one is actually a very real example, uh, but we're, we're, we're trying to build out a library of, of such things in the industries that we, uh, where we have clients. So that is a service we, we hope to be offering real soon. Of course, if, if anybody's, uh, you know, a client, you know, we're happy to share what we know already with you. All right, well, that's it for the questions. Just wanted to say thanks for uh, all the good conversations in the chat, and Morris Yankel is a super fan uh, when it comes to <laughs> back, Connor.
All right. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, before I go, I did want to point out we, we we're doing these weekly now, at least uh, uh, during the, the the COVID time, because it's uh, a lot of people working from home, and we're getting really good audiences for these. So we'll be doing one next Thursday, um, centered around managing remote workers, increasing engagement. Um, productivity and collaboration. Uh, you can use the same credentials you logged in with today or just um, you know look for us out on social media and we'll, we'll uh, let you know uh, how to get, get registered. So uh, thanks everybody. This is my uh, contact information. If you're still on and you want to contact me, that's my email. Uh, underneath it is my Twitter handle and tommcuen.net is my blog. Um, but uh, directly to Trend Data, you can just uh, email marketing at Trend Data. That's our Twitter handle. And as I pointed out, just go to our website and look at our content and uh, happy for you to take advantage of that for free. So thank you for your time and uh, a great session and uh, uh, look forward to talking again. Thank you.